There are thousands of applications that you can run on Google Cloud Compute Engine, each with different requirements. To meet those requirements, Google Cloud offers VM families, each optimized for specific needs. I'm gonna help you make sense of it by reviewing some important factors to consider when choosing the right Compute Engine VM. If you wanna choose the right VM, first, let's review how VMs are organized in Google Cloud. All VMs are categorized into either general purpose or workload optimized families. General purpose machines provide the best price performance ratio for a variety of workloads. As of right now, there are three machine types within the general purpose family. Efficient machines deliver reliable sustained performance, the lowest total cost ownership of any VM in Google Cloud. They're about 31% cheaper than N1 machines. Balanced machines offer more customization and a wider feature set. And Tau, which represents torque and physics, puts the pedal to the metal for industry-leading price performance. Tau is recommended for scale-out workloads, such as web servers, containerized microservices, and media transcoding. T2D is our first offering in the Tau family and provides full x86 compatibility on third-gen AMD Epic processors. As you go through the three types of general purpose machines, Efficient, Balanced, and Tau, they each have different levels of price performance. Where Efficient achieves the best price, Balanced sits in between providing the most feature flexibility, and Tau has the best price performance ratio. As for those workload optimized machines, there are three families here too. Compute optimized machines will offer the highest consistent performance per core, ideal for users with performance intensive workloads. C2 VMs are built on architecture that utilizes features like non-uniform memory access to achieve the highest performance. Memory optimized machines are best suited for memory intensive applications, providing the largest ratio of compute to memory and the lowest cost per gigabyte of memory. They provide the largest SAP certified machines with up to 12 terabytes of storage. And accelerator optimized machines. They offer the highest GPU performance for those heavy artificial intelligence and machine learning workloads. Google Cloud is the first platform to be able to attach 16 A100 GPUs to a single VM, allowing you mega performance to scale up and out. Okay, that's how they're organized, but that won't help you choose between a general purpose N2D high CPU 64 and a memory optimized M1 Mega Mem 96, for instance. These names don't exactly roll off the tongue, but understanding the naming convention going on here is a viable step towards making the right choice. It's pretty simple. The first part of the name refers to the machine series. This will tell you the category of the machine. For example, N2 machines run Intel and N2D denotes AMD, and both are categorized as general purpose. Each series is available as different machine types. That's there in the middle. Each type has a different virtual CPU to memory ratio to fit different workload requirements like high mem, high CPU, standard, etc. Lastly, the name ends with a number, which refers to the number of virtual CPUs for that machine. So now you can deduce that an N2D high CPU 64 has 64 virtual CPUs. And as part of the high CPU type, it has one virtual CPU to one gigabyte of memory ratio in the N2D series, which is in the general purpose family. In contrast, the M1 Mega Mem 96 has 96 virtual CPUs, and we know it'll have a higher ratio of memory because it's in the memory optimized family of M1 machines, which is a workload optimized family. At the end of the day, the right VM will largely be based on what you're gonna use that virtual machine for. And then from there, figuring out how much CPU and memory you'll need. This can help distinguish the machine needed. For example, AMD machines come in larger configuration sizes. Or if you require high memory volume, memory optimized is the way to go. If you're migrating an application from an on-prem system, we recommend some benchmarking and data collection to understand the application characteristics or testing the application on the machine type before deploying it in production. When choosing your CPU and memory requirements, you should also be sure to pay attention to the flip side, the CPU and memory that you don't need. That is, you should be careful not to over-provision your machine. For example, a general purpose N2 Standard 2 will provide you with two virtual CPUs and eight gigabytes of memory. But let's say the application you're gonna run on the instance uses most of the CPU most of the time, but never really uses more than about two gigabytes of memory. Well, in that case, you might be better off on an N2 High CPU 2 instance. 
That way, you're not getting billed for six extra gigabytes of memory that you don't need. Making sure you're provisioning just the right machine for your needs ensures that you're not overpaying for resources that you may never use. If you're not sure, no worries. Google Cloud provides right sizing recommendations based on your usage data to get the sizing just right. These recommendations are available within the Compute Engine instance page or within the Recommendations Hub. If none of the available machine types fit your requirements, keep in mind there's always custom machine types. With custom machine types, you can configure just the right amount of CPU and memory for your particular needs. In some cases, you could expect to save 50% or more compared to predefined types on other public cloud providers. With all things considered, if you're still not sure what machine type to choose, start off with something small. You can always move your workload to a larger machine at any time. Besides CPU and memory, another performance metric you should consider is disk performance. If your application needs the best disk IOPS, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you choose an instance type that will be compatible with one of two high performance disk solutions, local SSDs and extreme persistent disks. Local SSDs have the advantage of being physically attached to the server that hosts your VM, so you can get higher throughput and lower latency than standard persistent disks. They offer local block storage that is ephemeral and great for processing space, buffers, caches, and other temporary data. And for high-end performance critical applications, extreme persistent disk will offer higher maximum IOPS and throughput than other options. But keep in mind, it will require at least 64 virtual CPUs. Beyond disks, there are other features that you may need to check compatibility for when choosing your VM. There's confidential computing. This is a service that encrypts data in use while it's being processed. The transition to confidential VMs is seamless. All workloads we run today can also run as confidential VMs. No extra code changes to applications, just one checkbox to protect against rootkit and bootkits. But if you plan on using confidential computing, you'll have to choose an N2D from the general purpose family of VMs or a C2D from the compute optimized family. Another feature is sole tenancy. This lets you have exclusive access to a physical compute engine server that's dedicated to only the VMs in your project. This can be required for licensing of certain applications. With any compute engine feature, be sure to check out the documentation for VM compatibility when you're deciding on what VM to choose. So now that we know how to choose a VM, let's choose a VM. Let's say that my only requirement as of right now is a virtual machine with 16 virtual CPUs. With only that requirement, let's see what options I have. The workload optimized machines could be a good starting point. C2 standard 16 will give me the CPU that I want. It's a standard type, so it's got standard CPU memory ratio. What about general purpose machines? What do they have to offer? We'll start with seeing if E2s will be a fit. Well, an E2 standard 16 has similar specifications, 16 virtual CPUs and 64 gigs of memory. And it's priced a bit lower than the workload optimized C2. We'll add that as a possible choice, noting that this would save us some cost over time. Okay, now what if the performance of our application will need some block storage? Local SSDs are an excellent solution here. According to the documentation, we can't attach a local SSD to an E2, nor a T2D machine, but we can attach one to a C2. We still want a general purpose option. That's not a problem. There's N2 standard 16, N2D standard 16, and the N1 standard 16. All of these general purpose machines offer the same specifications on different microarchitectures and are compatible with local SSD. All right. Now, what if we did some testing and found out that while we can't budge on CPU, our application actually runs pretty well with less memory. This is our chance to optimize our cost by choosing a high CPU machine type. N2 high CPU 16, N2D high CPU 16, and N1 high CPU 16 all have the same CPU as the other options, but with only 16 gigabytes of memory. C2 machines are highly performant, so our application will run great on one but we'll be spending more on additional performance and memory that won't be used. So let's just remove C2 from our list. Based on our requirements so far, we've narrowed down our choice to any of these three choices. As more machine families and series are added to the compute engine lineup, your available options might differ. It's always a good idea to check the latest documentation when researching what VM will work for you. So what do you think? What factors came into play when you chose the right VM? Let us know in the comments. Until next time.